Hello everyone. So in this pre-lecture tutorial, we're going to discuss the calculation of reaction yields. Now, when we refer to the yield of a reaction, we're talking about the amount of product that is produced. Now, the stoichiometry problems that we've been doing in the chapter to this point have been calculations of what we call the theoretical yield. And what the theoretical yield is, it's the amount of product that I should get following the principles of stoichiometry that would occur if the reaction went absolutely perfectly. But there are those instances where reactions do not proceed perfectly. Sometimes um, a reaction involves the transfer of chemicals from one container to another. And so when that happens, it might be possible to lose some material, which would mean a small loss of product. Sometimes, even if there is no significant loss of material in transferring uh, reactants back and forth, sometimes you get chemical side reactions, reactions that you don't intend, that form something other than your product, and then that will also decrease the amount of the product that you're interested in. And so that eventuality leads us to actually end up with an amount of product that's less than we would calculate if we just follow the principles of stoichiometry. And so that amount that we truly get when a reaction occurs is what we call the actual yield. So let's actually have an example of how I can calculate a theoretical yield, as we have been to this point, and then how I can take that theoretical yield, compare it to an actual yield, to calculate a percentage of the, th the theoretical yield that I actually got from the chemical reaction. So let's begin by taking a look at this question in part A. I have this reaction right here, and I have 30 grams of this C6H6, that's benzene, and it reacts with 65 grams of bromine. And I get this compound, which is called bromobenzene, as a product. Now, if you notice, I'm given amounts for both of the reactants and so that makes this a limiting reagent problem and so what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to compare how much product I would form from both of these amounts of reagents and decide which one's the limiting reagent and then proceed from there so I'll start with the 30 grams of the benzene okay I'm going to convert that to moles and the molar mass of benzene is actually 78 Point one one. I'll leave that for you to verify using your periodic tables. And so now that I've actually divided through by the molar mass of benzene, I'm currently in moles of benzene, and I'm going to convert those moles of benzene to moles of bromobenzene. And if I do that, I get 0.384 moles of bromobenzene. Okay, now I'm going to repeat that calculation, but this time starting with the 65 grams of bromine. So I'm going to divide by the molar mass of diatomic bromine, which is 159.8 grams. Okay, and convert from moles of bromine to moles of the bromobenzene. And again, since the coefficients are one understood for both, that mole ratio is one to one. And so if I go ahead and do that math, I end up with 0 0.407 moles of bromobenzene. And so since the lesser amount of product is actually obtained when I use the 30 grams of benzene, that makes the 30 grams of benzene my limiting reactant, which means that I should base any stoichiometric calculations off of the stoichiometry of the benzene. Since I'm asked for a theoretical yield, so in this case that would be again the mass in grams of the product that I would form if this reaction went perfectly, then what I can do is starting from the 0.384 moles of the bromobenzene, I can convert that to grams using the molar mass of bromobenzene. 
So I'm going to go from moles of bromobenzene to grams of bromobenzene. That molar mass is 157.0. If I do this math, I end up with 60.3 grams of the bromobenzene. Let me make that a little bit clearer. Okay, so this is what I should expect if the reaction went perfectly. So that is my theoretical yield. Okay, now they're telling me what I actually got when I ran the reaction was 56.7 grams. So obviously there had to have been a small loss of product. Again, whether it's because of a loss on transfer or a side reaction, an impurity, I only get 56.7 grams of the product. They want to figure out, or they want me to figure out, I should say, the percent yield. So the way to figure out the percent yield is I'm going to take the actual yield, divide that by the theoretical yield, and multiply that by 100. So that would mean I would take 56, 0.7 grams divided by 60.3 grams times 100. And if I do that math, I, ended, I end up with 94.0% yield for this reaction. So what that means is I got 94% of the 60.3 grams that I was expecting. Okay, so work some of the practice problems. See if you can calculate some of these yields. Um, if there are any questions, by all means, email me, and obviously we'll be discussing this concept in class, and I'll see you then. Have a good night.